Welcome back, my friends. We're going to troubleshoot inter-office connectivity. As always, we're trying to simulate the exam. So for each problem, we'll read the trouble ticket and look at the topology diagrams as needed. Ticket number six. Ensure that EIGRP internal and external and OSPF intra-area and inter-area routes appear in R3's IP routing table. Do not remove any access control list or access control entries. And do not log into R1, R2, or R4. All right, let's go ahead and jump on over to R3. Here we are on R3. Let's go ahead and see if we have any IPv6 routes. Show IPv6 route. And let's scroll down here a little bit. And there are, in fact, no OSPF or EIGRP routes. Okay. Well, let's start with EIGRP since it is a link state protocol and that's going to make it a little bit simpler for us. So let's just do a show IPv6 EIGRP neighbor to see if we have any adjacencies and we have no neighbors. All right. Now the layer three and layer two topology diagrams show that we should have two adjacencies on gig 05, which is R5, and gig 06, which is R6. So let's take a look at our EIGRP interface configuration. Show IPv6 EIGRP interfaces. And we see that EIGRP is enabled on gig 05 and 06. Now, rather than going to R5 and R6, let's first check and see if we have IPv6 reachability to those neighbors via their global unicast addresses. We'll do a ping. 36 double colon 6 and a timeout of 1 and looks like that is in fact failing. All right, let's try 35 double colon 5 with a timeout of 1. This is R5 and we're getting no response from it as well. So let's go ahead and check the IPv6 neighbor table. Show IPv6 neighbors. And we have neighbor discovery entries for R5 and R6's global unicast addresses and their link local addresses. All right. Well, let's go ahead and try pinging the link local addresses. We'll do ping FE80, double colon 5, timeout of 1, and we'll repeat only twice so that we're not waiting. Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 5 is the outgoing interface. And we get no response there. Okay, now let's try FE80 double colon 6, timeout of 1, and repeat twice. And the outgoing interface here, gigabit Ethernet 06, and you do have to type out the full interface name. No response there as well. So what we know so far is neighbor discovery is in fact working, but nothing else seems to be working. Okay, let's do a show IPv6 traffic to see if we can get any clues and we'll scroll down a little bit more and notice where it says unreachable and the number of admin unreachables is 2,445. Now what this tells us is we're seeing IPv6 traffic filtering. We've got an access list somewhere that's blocking some traffic. Let's see if we can figure out what exactly that access list is. We'll do a show IPv6 interface and include is up or access and looks like gig 05 and gig 06 have an inbound ACL named paranoia and notice also that gig 03, 010 and 013 have it as well. Let's take a look at what this access list actually does. Show access list paranoia and it has one entry that blocks ff00 double colon slash 8 which you should recognize as the multicast range for IPv6. Now, the ticket said that we cannot remove any access control lists or entries. So we can't remove this, but perhaps we don't need to. Would blocking IPv6 multicast actually cause those pings to fail? Well, it really shouldn't. So is the access list actually a problem here? Well, remember, every access list has an implicit deny entry at the end, which denies all IPv6 traffic. Now, that would definitely cause our pings to fail. 
So what we can do is we can overcome that implicit deny by adding an entry to permit all IPv6 traffic. Let's go ahead and try it. Configure terminal, IPv6 access list paranoia, permit IPv6 any any. And right away we have some EIGRP adjacencies come up. Let's go ahead and check those routes. Show IPv6 route EIGRP. And now it looks like we have numerous internal EIGRP routes and one external route. So this is good. We're halfway there, but now we need to make sure OSPF inter and intra area routes show up as well. So let's check our OSPF adjacencies. Show IPv6 OSPF neighbor, and we've got no adjacencies, okay? Let's check the OSPF interface configuration. Show IPv6 OSPF interface brief, and it is enabled on gig 013, which is R2, gig 010, which faces R4, and gig 03, which faces R1, and all of those are in area 0, which is correct according to the layer 3 topology diagram. Now, what has to happen for OSPF neighbors to form an adjacency? Well, for starters, they need matching timers. Notice that the link type is point to multipoint, P2MP, for all of the physical interfaces. Now, we cannot log into R1, R2, or R4 to see how the link types are set up on those routers, but we can find out by using a debug. So let's do a debug IPv6 OSPF. Hello? And then we'll go ahead and turn off the debugs here. Now, what we see is we've got some mismatched hello parameters here, specifically hello timers. Look where it says dead R40C120 followed by hello R10C30. This is pretty cryptic, but the C is this router. R3. So what this means is that R3 has a hello interval of 30 seconds and a dead timer of 120 seconds. R is the other end and it shows a hello interval of 10 seconds and a dead timer of 40 seconds. And that is the same for all of those adjacent routers. Now this hello and dead interval combination, a hello interval of 10 seconds, dead timer of 40 seconds, that corresponds to the default timers for both the broadcast and the point-to-point -point OSPF network types. We're not sure which it is, but we do know that based on the topology diagrams, the links between R3 and its OSPF neighbors look like point-to-point -point links. So let's go ahead and set these links to the point-to-point -point network type. Configure terminal, interface range, gig 03, gig 010, and gig 013. Make sure I have a comma there instead of a period. And we'll do IPv6 OSPF network point to point, not point to multipoint, but point to point. And notice we get a potential network type mismatch error from R1. Now, nevertheless, the adjacency with it comes up as well as the other two. So let's see if we have any routes now. We'll do a do show IPv6 route OSPF. And we still get no routes. Okay, let's take a look at the link state database, specifically the router LSAs that R3 is generating. We'll do a show IPv6 OSPF dat router, and we want to see only the ones coming from R3. Now notice that the connection here to R2 is described as a point-to-point -point link here in this LSA. That's how R3 sees it. Now, let's see if R2 agrees that this is actually a point-to-point -point link. Now, first thing, we're going to get the type 8 LSA. We'll do a do show IPv6 OSPF dat link for the link type, and the advertising router is going to be 2222. And we've got one link facing R3, and you can tell that by the prefix address of 23 double colon slash 64. Now, look at the link state ID here. It's 15. Now, let's go ahead and do a show IPv6 OSPF dat router advertise to 222. Look at the router LSAs. And now look at the link with the matching link state ID of 15. 
R2 considers this a transit network, not a point-to-point -point link. Okay, so R2 and R3 disagree about what this link type is. Now, check this out. LSA ignored an SPF calculation. R3 is ignoring this router LSA because of the mismatch. And if it ignores R2's router LSA, that means it has no way to get to R2, and hence, it won't install any routes Learn from R2. So, the fix here is to change the OSPF network type to broadcast. Let's go ahead and do that. We're actually already in interface configuration mode, so we'll just do an IPv6 OSPF network broadcast. Our adjacencies drop, and then they come back up. So we have full adjacencies with one, two, and four. So let's go ahead and check the routing table again. Do show IPv6 route OSPF, not router, OSPF. And now we have both OSPF inter and intra area routes. Beautiful. So guess what? This ticket is solved. Let's move on to the next one.